So I'm April Yi, and um, I graduated in 2002 from Oaks College. I majored in American Studies and Psychology and minored in Communication and Rhetoric. Um, and I'm also an alumni counselor, and I serve on the UC Santa Cruz Alumni Council, which supports the educational calling of UC Santa Cruz. And we provide volunteer opportunities for alumni. Um, counselors serve on action-oriented committees to support the uh, UCSC community. And we also support our Alumni Association Scholarship Fund, which provides UCSC students with financial need and high academic standing a $3,000 annual scholarship. And this year we awarded 49 scholarships and hope to grow this fund so we can give even more support to more students. And you'll hear more about this um, at the end and how you can support. So now I'd like to introduce um, Valerie Largen, who has volunteered to share one of her passions with us. She graduated from Crown in 1972. And Valerie has been a teacher, an image consultant, a business development executive, a copywriter and an event planner. And I'm really looking forward to what she's going to share with us. So please welcome Valerie Largen. Thank you so much, April. I appreciate it. Let's share this screen and get rolling. The presentation we're having today is going to be divided into four parts. We're going to try and do questions between if um, you don't mind. Okay, whoops. Okay, so we're going to get started. And like I said, if you have questions, put them in the chat. Paulina is going to um, watch over them and feed them to me as, as needed so that I can uh, concentrate on what I'm talking to you about. But uh, what are loaded cards? Hold on. Everyone enjoys receiving mail. But imagine how much fun it is to receive a fun card like this. You see all the little goodies? It's filled with unique inserts and all sorts of things designed to make you smile and encourage you and give you the giggles if necessary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the cards are loaded. They're loaded with personal wishes, photos, other goodies to help you celebrate holidays or occasions or encourage you. Um, I have a friend who just fell and is now in a rehab center recovering. So I'm going to make her a nice card to let her know I'm thinking about her and to give her some, you know, to cheer up a little bit. Loaded cards are personalized. You can highlight special memories, personal references, inside jokes, even loved things like pets and grandkids, and sports, movies, nostalgia, hobbies. I have a friend who collects classic cars. And so, you know, he loves getting stuff about classic cars, anything like that. This particular one you're showing here is for a friend of mine who has a new granddaughter next coming next week. And though they're great fun to receive, they are so much fun to make and to give and to hear back on how people enjoyed them. I just gave one to my friend's husband for his birthday. And he called me and he says, oh, Valerie, I just love this card. And I love the little joke things you put in it. This is my favorite. And my wife chose a couple because she likes to re-gift them. And it was just really, he just had such a good time. And he said, and he was reading me the ones he liked and we were laughing and it was just a wonderful time. And he says, I just love getting these. He says, they're the best present I ever get. So think about that, because sometimes if you can't afford to give a gift, this is a tremendous gift people really enjoy. <clears throat> and the possibilities for what you can do are endless. And choosing what to include is a great adventure too. You can do photos, bookmarks, jokes, cartoons. You can even do spa items journal cards, fun cutouts, sachets, you know, it's really nice to get something that smells nice in the mail, magnets, party favors and decor, post-its. You can even take tiny envelopes and put little surprise things inside of them so that it becomes like a little Russian doll to unload. And then even small gifts and cards, even, even gift cards and money and stuff. So be creative and make your card a real treasure hunt. It's so much fun. <clears throat> and it's also fun to add texture and bling. My sister teases me because I like to dazzle things up. I'm a real glitter glue lover. Um, 
but you can use colored glitter markers, glitter glue, liquid pearls, which I love because they make a little mounded thing that looks like half a pearl, distressing, stickers, gems, lace, ribbons, trims, fabrics, even cheesecloth. You can add pieces torn out or cut from books or sheet music or other greeting or note cards, uh, wrapping paper, scrapbook paper, any other kinds of pretty papers. Um, decorated or uniquely shaped paper clips. I have a friend who does all these great charms on interesting paper clips and clips them under her cards. Magnetic bookmarks are great and they're really eye-catching too. You can also ship, slip in shaker envelopes. I'll tell you more about that later about how to make one, but they have sequins and confetti and charms and buttons inside, things that rattle and sparkle and, and uh, are really fun. So you, can, you wanna make your card a little dazzling. And now that you have a hint of what the possibilities are, uh, we're gonna learn how to make your own loaded cards. Um, I'm hoping some of you got supplies. If you have to, you know, just use a plain piece of paper to get the idea of the technique and, and do it more dazzling later, that's just fine too. But let's learn how to make them. Okay. And we're, you're going to be getting some handouts and um, they're gonna appear in your chat window. And one of the handouts is a um, detailed direction sheet for how to do this. So I'm gonna show you how to do it, but you'll have one to refer to later in case you kind of forget what's, what's what. So whether you choose the 12 by 12 double-sided or single-sided print cardstock or a scrap paper, scrap of paper or some other type of paper, paper or size of paper, we have to start with a square. So it needs to be cut in a square. And if all else fails, you can fold it to the side um, to um, be able to make a square. Do you know how to, I, if you fold it over, <coughs> excuse me, so that you make a triangle and you, whatever's left over, cut that off, then it'll be a square. Okay, so the preferred material that I asked you for was double-sided print cardstock, which often comes in pads. You can get it sometimes separately in sheets at Michael's. But you want to take your double-sided print cardstock sheet from your 12 by 12 inch pad. And they usually have this little circle on, on, the, on the side. And in your readiness uh, and supplies handout that you were sent before the class, it talked about where you can get things. But if you see here, it shows you, you wanna trim off the side strip with the hole if you're using a 12 by 12 sheet. If you're using oblong paper, you can see how to fold it down into a triangle, cut it off. So then now you have a square. So we start with a square. Now you're gonna take your square and you're gonna match the corners diagonally so that you make a triangle. And you just wanna, you know, press down so you make your, your little fold firm. Okay. I see people looking diligently, so there's some people making it. Okay, now, now that you have your triangle, you wanna put your point facing up. And if, you have, if you're using a 12 by 12 inch sheet, if you take your ruler and measure five and five eighths inch from either side, it'll tell you exactly where to put the fold. If you're of a more expedient personality, you can kind of hold it and try and make it into thirds yourself. <laughs> But uh, that's the idea is we're basically creating three sections, folding one, one point to the left and one point to the right so they overlap and it looks like a little house. And you want to make sure your bottom edges are aligned before you press your, whole, your folds down and make them more permanent. Okay. Are the pictures helping? Okay, now once you have your little house shaped, you're going to turn the little roof to the right, so it's pointing right, and then you're going to take that little roof part and press it down so that the point meets at the center. Now in the picture, you can kind of see the insides of the car. I did it that way because I wanted you to kind of see where the brakes were, otherwise it was kind of difficult to see, but you're going to press that little bird beak of a roof down to the center so that basically it becomes a square. 
Then you're gonna open up your square and you're gonna turn it so that it looks like a diamond and those little rooftops or I call them beaks point left and right. Okay. And so basically you have this kind of big oblong in the middle with a point up and a point down and little points left and right. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're going to see where the blue arrow is. You're gonna spread a strip of your tacky glue down the center fold of that middle section. Okay. So just down the very middle part of that center section, nothing on the points. Okay, then you're gonna turn, you're gonna take your top point of your diamond and fold it down so it gets stuck in that little glue and make sure your folds are aligned. Okay. Then you're gonna look and you've got, see below, you're going to, in the bottom fold, in the point of the bottom fold, the fold of the bottom point, sorry, you're gonna put a strip of glue and then halfway up either side of the point, you just push down forming a Y. And you do it on top of that bright, the bright print or basically the back print. So, cause you don't want it to slop over onto the pink because then it's gonna just glue it shut. And you don't want that. You don't wanna glue it shut. Can't fill it up if it's glued shut. So you're gonna form your little Y with your glue, okay? Then you'll fold up your point so that the glue that's in the middle of the fold gets aligned on the fold and glues down. And then the half of your, where you put your Y gets glued down. And then you wanna put your hand in there, make sure nothing got stuck to the bottom on the little light pink, okay? If, you, if, it, if there's some glue in there, just take a tissue or a paper towel and just wipe it out and just kind of air it a little bit and uh, then it won't stick it shut. Okay, and the little points to the left and right, I call those the bird beaks. So if you hear me talking about beaks, it's those little side parts. Okay, now you'll see this, if you were to turn it over, so you have your outside print up and you see where the little bird beaks can come over. You see the picture up here? See, this is it face down. The points are the, what we just glued is facing down. And these are the little bird beaks on the side. Okay. All right. Now, one of the things you want to do is in the cards I showed you initially, some of them um, I had put another pocket on the front of the card. You see where my little arrow is going? I put another pocket there so I could put some more goodies in. If that's something you think you'd like to do, or if you think you wanna decorate this with something that's fairly big, that might be something that would go under that bird beak, then don't glue the bird beak down yet, okay? But if you think that you'll, anything that you're gonna to wanna to put on there, you'll be small and you wanna go ahead and do your bird beaks down now, what you do is you take, see this black arrow? You put glue there on the bottom half of the bird beak. And then when you glue it shut, you have a you have a pocket here you can put goodies in. And then this bottom part is glued, okay? So if you're gonna wanna decorate this front part with kind of something bigger, then wait to glue down your bird beaks till later, okay? All right. And so um, now when you glue down your bird beaks, you want to make sure that that center part See that little point that we glued down? Make sure it's always pointing up before you put glue down your beak because what happens is if you glue it so that it's pointing down, then your pockets are down and stuff is gonna fall out. So you wanna make sure that this beak, this, I'm not, sorry, this peak is always pointing up and then your bird beaks on the front are glued on the bottom part based on the fact that that point inside is facing up, okay? Valerie, this mm -hmm. is Barbara. I'm, we've gotten a few chats of people have had to stop because they kind of got lost and weren't following okay. I don't okay. know if you wanna uh, be able to back up so they can keep sure. making. Sure, 
I have no problem backing up. I guess. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's go back to this. Part. All right, we have the, okay, we had the, we did the initial, whoops, we did the initial fold. And then this part over here is what becomes the bird's beak, the last part that you folded down. Okay, then you put your glue in the middle and then you brought down your top peak and the bright big print is basically the outside and the little light print is the inside. Then you did your glue on this fold and glue here and here. Then you brought it up, pointing up. So there's glue here and there's glue underneath this part and there's glue underneath this part, okay? But we made sure that it didn't get onto the light pink because then it would glue our pocket shut, okay? Are we, are we good so far? Okay, when you turn that over, those little bird beaks that are left out, see how they're kind of pointing up here? We're going to fold them this way and eventually they'll be glued on the bottom part so that they leave a pocket here. But before you glue it, you check inside to make sure that the inside peak is pointing up so that your pockets inside will be pointing up like this. So you want that pocket pointing up. If it's pointing down, your goodies will fall out, okay? So this is it face down with the little, pe little beaks, okay? And then on the inside, we're making sure that this point is face, whoops, that was weird. Anyway, we're making sure that this is pointing upward. Okay. Does that help, Barbara? Yes. Okay. Okay. All righty. Now, basically, now your card is decorated, embellished, loaded with inserts, little gifties, etc. So, this is our next part. Okay, is there anybody who needs any review on the how to make your card part? Ask now, this is your chance. <laughs> okay, I am okay. still on 13 where I'm turning it over. Okay. Step 13, I'm turning it over and okay. I'm just, I got I kind of got stuck there. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it forward because this is a better picture. Okay and the one on 13, but you've got your your fat, I, I'm gonna call it the fat print. It's basically your outside print. I don't know what prints you're using. So this is the, out, this is the outside, okay? okay? The little light pink is the inside. And what happens is when you turned it over, you press these little bird beaks down. You see mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna do a fat decoration on the front. Don't worry about gluing them until later. But whoops, that was weird. But when you do glue them, before you put any glue on the front of the car for those little beaks, you check the inside to make sure this is pointing up. So you'll know what's the bottom part of this. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. And then you're going to do the same thing over here. But again, make sure that this guy's pointing up. Because otherwise, you, you know, one side, either the inside or the outside are going to have pockets facing down if you don't check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. All right. Yay, woohoo. Okay, now we'll go to the next part. Now you've got your card and it's time to talk about putting stuff in it. So we're gonna talk about inserts. All right, so we're gonna do our slideshow from the beginning. Okay, so now that you have your card, what are you going to put in it? Now, I want you to look real quickly at some of these. Do you see why I meant that the peak needed to be up? See how there's little things you're going to want to put in there? If it was facing down, it'd be hard because they would fall out all the time. See here, over here, we have some more. And then we have inserts in the, what I call big pockets. And then on the front, and this is actually the back, has some inserts in it too. This is the front of this one. 
Uh, on these, like on this one, I put uh, a pocket, an, an additional pocket that I made out of some crafty paper and some decorations on the front. And then I weighted and I put the beak down on top of it. You see that? And in the back, I did the same kind of a thing. I did an extra pocket and then I put goodies in it and then I secured it down. And th see this little guy right here? This is actually the picture on the back of a calendar. You know, on the back of a calendar, they'll show you what each of the months looks like. And this is a Mary Inglebright, I think. And I really like the little angel. And then see these little guys right here that look like rivets? That's liquid pearls. Remember how I got all starry eyed when I was describing liquid pearls earlier? I just love the effect. It does look like a half of a pearl there or a, a kind of a shiny rivet. And it comes in all sorts of glorious colors, like brass and, you know, rose. This is rose gold and I'm silver. And I mean, it's just, it's so much fun. So anyway, and then this guy is actually a little stick on gem you can get at Dollar Tree that looks like a pearl. And the particular pack I have has different sizes. So I picked a fat one so that it would look kind of like a little button. There's so much, it's, there's so much you can do. It's going to be so much fun. So anyways, so there's a lot of things you can do that are actually ready made. You know, if you're a little shy about making inserts right off the bat, you can go to, like, say, you can go to your Dollar Tree, you can go to your stationery store, you can go to, you know, Walmart, you can go to Goodwill or whatever, but you can do all sorts of stuff. Photos, you can do other greeting cards inside of this. You can do those lunchbox cards, those encouragement cards you get to put in kids' lunchboxes, mini cards, gift tags, and cards, notepads, paper clips, post its. Tiny envelopes, CD, oh, CD envelopes are fun. You know, they have the big cir circle window in them. I did one where I put a picture of a goldfish inside of it. <laughs> so it looked like it was in a little aquarium or a little goldfish bowl. So that was really fun. It's very simple and you can get them in colors um, at Office Depot or whatever. You can put in little mini books. Uh, you know, sometimes you can get those little mini books of quotations. Those are really fun to put in there. All sorts of different bookmarks. You can make them yourself or get them. I'll show you some pictures later. Little mini toys, puzzle pieces, trivia cards are fun, especially for old folks like us. Uh, game cards, playing cards. You can actually, actually take playing cards and decorate them um, and use them as your base. Tea bags, like you find, you know, some exotic teas. Like I love Tazo's passion tea that's really good to put in there party favors you go to dollar tree you can see all sorts of party things you can put in there and you just want to make sure they're less than six you know less than just under six inch square and they'll go in that big pocket like i'll get one of those swirls you know that you can make for a party that it comes down it spirals down says happy birthday on the bottom when it's all folded up it fits in there perfectly um, some of the banners that say happy birthday, the same thing. Once they're folded up, they're just the right size to go in there. Name tags, luggage tags. You can also get birthday sashes at Dollar Tree if you watch. It says birthday girl or whatever. Um, initials, a lot of people like initials, uh, initial notepads, magnets, uh, spice packets, seed packets, um, like um, crisp, uh, beverage, like, you know, crystal light or whatever, any kind of um, Kool-Aid, jerky, fruit roll-ups, chewing gum, comic strips, cartoons. You know, if you, people have a favorite cartoon or whatever, you can stick that in there, jokes. Uh, when the pandemic really hit, I used to, I gathered a bunch of jokes and made these lists of jokes and I would stick them in the cards I'd send people along with instructions for games because I figured they were stuck at home. I'd give them something to do. Um, directions for games or crafts, little placards, feathers, gift cards for stores, um, matchbook or many emery boards. I know Dollar Tree sometimes have emery boards that are shaped like butterflies. Um, current sells them in a little matchbook and you tear them out like you do a match. Um, handkerchiefs, hair accessories, sachets, sleep masks, iPads. You can get these funny phone, uh, not phone, kind of funky little puffy iPads at uh, Dollar Tree. They look like cucumbers, slices, um, facial scrubbies, all sorts of little spa items. Avoid liquids and gels though, because if you're sending these in the mail, you don't want them to be squished and then they get their card that's all covered with goo. So um, be creative, there's lots of possibilities. Um, let's see. Here's some pictures of some things, I, like I mentioned, like there's this, um, 
no pads that are shaped like initials. You can get those at Dollar Tree. This is actually a posted pad. These are ready-made. Watch in the stationery sections at uh, Dollar Tree and some other stores at Walmart, etc. cetera. Um, they actually have ready-made, really cute things that you can put in there. Um, these are magnets I got from Current. This is actually a little hanging thing. It's a little uh, wooden uh, love thing. It has a little hanging thing on it. Uh, these are different shaped buttons. I've got hearts, I've got stars. Um, these are, well, I was talking about unusual paper clips. This is actually a luggage tag that's shaped like a pineapple. This is a sleep mask that comes with um, earplugs. I got it at Dollar Tree. This is a bookmark I got from Current. Um, there's just, the possibilities are totally endless. The other thing is, is on the end caps at Dollar Tree in their gift, um, their green card section, they have all these note cards. And you'll notice a lot of them have really great graphics, like this one with the um, birthday candles and, you know, the little gift uh, over here. And uh, well, I like this one with the really pretty shoe. Uh, let's see, there's all sorts of them that... I like this one as exclamation part, points, um, the bug flies. This one I love, it has all sorts of hearts on it. You can cut it into bookmarks. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. You can use it in the background for other things. You know, this one says hi. But anyways, there's all sorts of stuff. And there's a, there was a term in scrapbooking, I guess, um, called fussy cutting. And what it means is you cut around, like if you cut around this um, shell here, cut all around it. I guess it's called fussy cutting because people that like to do little precise stuff like that really enjoy it. But um, I like to do fussy cutting. Again, my sister teases me because I'm a real big on fussy cutting. But uh, you can cut out things and then attach them onto your cards or attach them on inserts you're making uh, or use them as a background for a little greeting you might want to print out and stick on there. Um, this is one of my favorites. I don't even tell. It's three little cupcakes. And I love to, to use glitter glow on them and make the little fruit and stuff on them sparkle. And I mean, there's just, there's so much you can do. So there's lots of ready-made items that you can use in your cards. Why isn't it advancing? Hmm. That's weird. Now it's not, a, there we go. Um, the other thing is, is those of you who, who went and got pads of paper or cardstock, whatever to use for the class, some pads come with actually with ready-made inserts in them. See some of these pretty ones. Hello, you've got this, you know, live, laugh, love. This one's flowers. Um, these are tags. I have to tell you a lot of these, this whole idea of making these kinds of cards stems from a, um, a craze, I'll call it, uh, on called junk journals, where people create journals of, with all sorts of decorated things and stuff like that, and then they journal in them. So there's a number of um, there's a number of things that come out, and they they create them with the idea that some people are going to want to journal on them. So you'll find things where like they have this on the front and on the back. There's room to write or they may be writing prompts uh, or stuff like that. So um, if you wanna watch videos and stuff like that later to learn other ideas for how you can make things called tags, um, look for junk journaling videos and they'll give you all sorts of great ideas. But these, like say, these pads will sometimes come with ready-made inserts basically in them. And then you can also use cards, like the cards I showed you from Dollar Tree, all the different note cards. Though what's great about those, those are note cards. So they're gonna fit in those big pockets in your card without any kind of trimming or anything. These are a little bit larger cards, but a lot of times what you can do with some five by seven greeting cards is you can trim them from the top and the bottom so that they're just under six inches long. They're gonna be only five inches wide already and still preserve the greeting inside and you can even write in them, et cetera. You can also cut just the fronts off and do sorts of stuff. You could also fussy cut, like you could fussy cut each of these little hearts if you wanted to, or you could cut off just the bottom, it says lots of love, and turn it into a bookmark. I mean, there's all sorts of things that you can do. Please just don't feel like there's a bunch of rules. The rule is to have fun and, and you know, explore your imagination. These are some note cards, like there's the one with the cupcakes I was telling you about. And unfortunately, the sparkle didn't 
photograph as well as I'd like, but this one actually came already sparkly. And this one came already sparkly. So you can watch it when you're if you're purchasing stuff and you can see, and like I've done these where I've uh, done some fussy cutting or I've cut the front of the card off. And then um, a lot of times people will round the edges. You can get little um, edge rounders at the craft store very easily and then use them as an insert. And sometimes I'll put a greeting on the back because this because this back of this front card is going to be blank. And anyway, they make really fun inserts in that way too. You don't always have to be, you know, on the top of your game with your imagination. You have some things ready made. Um, there are printables and I, in your handouts, there are links to free printables. And also I had suggested some of you who didn't have an account with Pinterest to go ahead and get one. It doesn't cost you anything. But if you go on Pinterest and look for free printables, it'll guide you to a lot of different ones. But these are some that I um, downloaded. They were free printables that I found via Pinterest at different sites. And some of these are on the list of uh, things I gave you. And I downloaded them like this one is sheet music. And then if I want to, I can tear that up and use it, little parts of it. This one is actually came up postcards. These are some random quotes. These are a little bit smaller. Okay, then the other thing is that you can use Publisher to create your own text box inserts. Uh, you can find funny or encouraging sayings or quotes that you like, and then you can create a little text box in Publisher and then type in your saying and then use an interesting font and spacing and then do your background. So like I did here, sometimes you forget that you were awesome. This is your reminder. I like that saying, so I made awesome yellow and then I picked a green background. It's just a text box, but it looks cool and you can cut it out and use it as an insert. You can, you know, glam up the awesome if you want, put a little sparkle to it with clear glitter glue. But anyway, but you, what you want to do is you create your document in Publisher, then you save it as a picture. And then you can insert it in Word or publish your documents to print out. Now, another thing you can do, this one, I made two different text boxes. Science says birth, birthdays are good for your health. Studies show that people who have more birthdays live longer. Okay, so then what you wanna do is you save that page as a picture. Then you go and you drop that picture that you just saved into Publisher again and then you crop it and then you save that particular document, the little part that you cropped as a JPEG, as a picture, and then you can drop that into a document to print, okay? So if you're gonna just do the text box that you had, you can just go ahead and save that. You can right click it and then one of the choices is save as, you save it as a picture, you make sure that it, that it, when it, comes up that it says, um, instead of saying publisher, you, cl you click on that and it'll give you a choice. You right click on it, it gives you the choice of um, saving it as a publisher document or a JPEG document, save it as a JPEG. And then like I say, if you wanna do more stuff on the page, just save the whole page as a picture, drop that picture back into publisher, crop it, and then right click that and save that as your JPEG. Okay, if you have trouble with that, contact me, I'll be glad to help you. Now, another thing you can do is you can try using a picture as a background instead of the green that I used up above. I went in and I went to um, um, insert and then I chose picture. Well, it's one of the choices is online pictures or stock images. So I went into online pictures and I typed in star because I figured people who are awesome are stars. So I get a star. So I went in there, I found this star and I saved that and that became my background. And then I used white print in a text box that I put in front of this picture. And then I saved the page. Like we did with the two text boxes we just did. Saved it as a picture. Then I dropped it back into publisher cropped it and then saved that as my picture so that I could use it and then I put it in a document, printed it out, cut it out. Then I went in here and I put uh, glitter on it or clear glitter glue and then it's all sparkly and wonderful and ready to give somebody once it's dry. 
another thing you can do is you can take things you created, like the one we did about being awesome, and you can line them up next to each other, print out the whole thing, then cut around the edges, and then fold it to make this little accordion guy. And people like getting these because they'll stand up like on a windowsill or a mantle or whatever, and they can enjoy them and admire them. I have several friends who say, oh, I can't wait. I love it when I get your things. I put them up on the mantle at home and enjoy them. So, um, so that's a fun thing to do. And you, they can be serious. They can be funny. This one happens to be a birthday one. You know, don't throw up. It's a trap. Party like a rock star, but like the older ones who sober up and, and go to bed at 10. So there's all sorts of things you can do. Okay, uh, you can create uh, unique inserts. I want you to copy this down if you would. I thought it got onto the handouts, but I don't think it did. It's HTTPS colon backslash backslash www.websiteplanet.com slash blog slash best dash free dash fonts and then backslash that takes you to 70 free fonts for designers and um the handouts you've got lists a bunch of fonts but in case you have trouble getting the links to take you there this is that's where i got those fonts from is this article okay another thing you can do is you can take your little thing you printed out and you can put it on a background and you can do use found items this is the a box I got a polo local lunch lunch in and I cut it up and I used the part of the box with the little print on it to put this on and make an insert. So the possibilities are endless. You can try money inserts. These are ideas where they rolled up money and made them look like birthday candles. You could also make them look like a, you know, fold, roll them lengthwise. They can look like a diploma or a telescope for graduation or bon voyage. You can Fold cash to look like a diaper for a new baby. I mean, there's just so many possibilities. You can get ideas like this is something I saw where they took little safety pins to make a little family and decorated them. This one used Legos. This is one I did. I got round table the other day and they put crushed peppers and Parmesan cheese in it. So I made one that says stay hot and put the peppers on it. And then it may sound cheesy, but I love you and put the cheese on it. And then this is the shaker card I talked about. And there's instructions for this in your handouts. But basically you use junk mail that has the windows in it. See that this is, this is actually the window and there's confetti and stuff inside the envelope. And then I decorated the envelope and put like say put confetti and buttons and things that will make a shake sequins. And then it makes a little shaker and you can stick that in your card. So get your juices flowing, the possibilities are endless. This is my favorite cardstock to print out my inserts on. It's, it's called Nina and it's bright white, 65 pound. It's fabulous stuff. It prints well. It doesn't clog up your printer and um, it takes color well. And so it's easy to embellish. So let's talk about embellishing. Okay, now. Whoops. Okay, embellishments add to the fun. Uh, you can dazzle it, dazzle up all you're doing. There's so many different things that you use. See, here's liquid pearls. <laughs> this is washi tape. This is glitter glue. These are glitter markers, ribbon, puppy hearts. This is a pack of cards I got at um, Dollar Tree. This is confetti. Try not to put confetti loose in your cards. Use it in your shape of cards or take the individual ones and stick them on to decorate. These are stick on words. You can get those. Tim Holt makes a, Holtz makes a lot of these and they're really nice. And these are uh, rub on letters I got at Dollar Tree. And then these are stickers I got at Dollar Tree. Um, Dollar Tree is your friend. Um, then you wanna look for color media. We talked about some of those. Also um, watercolors work great. Um, distressing. You can even use old eyeshadow. Um, finger paint inks are fun. Glossy accents is this stuff that you put on top of it and it kind of seals it in this glossy um, goo that dries and it just makes it really shimmery, shiny. Okay, you can use all kinds of um, things to apply. As you'll see here, I took some uh, paper from a cardstock uh, packet to make a pocket. 
Then on top of that, I put some polka dot paper. On top of that, I put a cut out, uh, torn out page from um, an old falling apart copy of Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Over here, I did the, um, you know, the free printables. I took the music, uh, sheet music from that, and then a piece of a book. This is a puppy sticker, and then a word. This is a little wooden uh, button. There's so many things you can do. I mean, there's just innumerable things you can do. Uh, this is washi tape. Um, like I said, this was off of a calendar. This one, it's kind of hard to see, but here's the little sheet music. And on top of that is a clear sticker that said, this is the life. And then this is a little kind of a uh, 3D stick on. It's a donut and it has a little puffy, sticky, uh, adhesive on the back of it so it stands up so it has lots of texture. Um, this is a picture I found and then I put across it I think of you often and fondly. Um, just did it in publisher, dropped the picture in as the background and then created my and, uh, and then I you can't hardly tell here but I dolled it up with glitter glue. The, the little lace curtains sparkle. It's really it's so much fun and um, this is one, it was heads kind of like a sun. So sunshines, I put gold on it. This is the cupcakes I was telling you about. There's just so many things you can do. You can use inks for stamping effects. See the edge of this? A lot of people do what they call distressing along the edge of something. This is actually from a pad I got. It's shaped like a flower and each petal is a different color. It's a stamp pad. This is a stamp that's writing. So I put the ink on the little stamp and stamped it down. This is a little invitation card from Dollar Tree. I fussy cut it around a little bit and distressed the edges with the green. There's just so much you can do. Um, these are some 3D stick on. This is that one I was telling you about. It's the clear sticker on the music. You can see the donut a little better here, but there's so many things. These are some stickers you can kind of tell got in different places. A lot of these, like this was a whole pack I got at Dollar Tree for a dollar, it's great. Um, this one, I took um, glitter glue that has metallics in it. So it's metallic gold. So it actually stands up, so it has a nice texture. This is hard to tell, but I took um, glossy accents and glossed on the uh, button. This one, each of the buttons, oops, sorry. Each of the buttons on these cute shoes is got glossy accents on it, so it stands up. You know, it has some texture. <coughs> These are some things you can do with uh, words and phrases. Remember I told you that you can buy those sheets with phrases and words in them. That's what these are, this beautiful one, to dream all the happy days. Those are all from there. This is actually a little piece of confetti that says surprise. It came from one of those packs of confetti I got at Dollar Tree and I used that on the front of the shaker card. There's, you can see, see this, you can see that little piece of calendar better. And then I put that ribbon behind it. Again, a roll. I got it at Dollar Tree, really inexpensive. So use your imagination. It is so much fun to um, try different techniques and play. And like I say, you can go on YouTube and see videos for junk journals and tags. Also um, look for ones that talk about making tags or pockets. So much fun. Okay. Let me have it. Any of your questions, you can take yourselves off mute. Can you unmute people, Paulina? I don't know if you have everybody uniform or muted. Um, you can at this point unmute yourself. So if you um, have a question, um, you can raise your hand or just jump in um, or let us know in the chat if you don't want to speak out. Um, so yeah, here we go. Anybody have questions? I'm going to go back to the first one that has some of the pictures of one so that, that might help you. If you had some questions, you could say, well, how did you do that? Or what did you do? I have a question about that. The two things that you mentioned that sounded really good was the, and I see I've already forgotten what you called it. And you said it wasn't in the pages that you gave us the stuff that makes things stick out and you put it on the, the shoes. What was that called? The glossy. Glossy yes. accent, and it's, that just says you get that at any craft store. Yes, I got mine from Amazon. Okay. Um, because I was in a hurry, okay. and I actually I tried. Go
Joanne's had it on sale, but they didn't have any in stock at the one near me, and I didn't want to drive 10 miles to the nearest next one. Um, on your list of media, on there where it says, you know, fine colored media and stuff like that, glossy accents is listed on there. Oh, great. Okay, great. And then the other okay. thing was that yeah. the, the pearl you mentioned at the beginning, you were talking about that, the silver like pearl. pearl. Liquid pearl. Liquid is that on there too? Pearls. Yes, okay. and it's my one of my favorite things. I know that just sounds that and clear, Yes, that okay. and clear okay. glitter Thank glue. Thank you. Clear glitter glue will make everything wonderful. You're welcome. Also, um, there's a brand of glitter markers that are my favorite, and they're called Handmade. And I got them at Target, and lately they haven't had them. So I actually went on Amazon looking for them and found them, and I ordered some. They should be here soon. But it's called Handmade by something, but just Handmade, and it's glitter markers. And what I love about them is they, um, they're, they're see-through, but glittery. Because I've gotten, I've tried... I find myself using up the gold a lot. So when I get those, the gold and the red tend to, you know, I tend to use up those fastest. But so I was looking for other gold things to use, but a lot of them, like there's some wonderful markers you can get that it looks like liquid gold when you put it on there, which is great, but you can't see through it. So I like this because you can get the goldish effect, but you see through it, which I really loved. And so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll print out stuff and it'll have maybe, you know, kind of some, um, uh, not photos, but, you know, things that people have drawn or whatever. And there's a lot of yellow in them. And so I'll use that on them and it just makes them look so beautiful. But like I said, I end up using it up a lot, that in green. Um, so I look for those a lot because like I said, you get the glittery, but it's see-through and it's not, it's not as thick as the clear glitter glue. And with the clear glitter glue, don't go crazy. You can put some on and then rub it around with your finger to spread it places. Um, and then what happens though is once it dries, your paper may be a little ripply. So what I do is like maybe put it between two books, you know, for like, 15 minutes or so and then it'd be fine. But you want to make sure it's dry. Um, but uh, and like I said, I, I would get a corner rounder if you can. They're they're not very expensive. You can get them at Joann's or Michael's or online or whatever. But it's nice to round those corners. It's amazing. You can take something that you printed out, it looks okay, but you round the corners and suddenly it looks really fancy. So and two, it's easier for people to pull out without cutting themselves and getting a paper cut or something too. Any other questions? Sarah, was any other on. ideas? Sure. I have a question. Um, Sarah? Was, yes, hi. Um, I, uh, hi. hi, my name is Sarah Ayushi. Your pronouns I graduated in 2017. Also crown major, okay. politics, film studies, Yay. literature marker. Cool. Um, I have a dumb question, which is, how do you send these? Is it something that a 55 cent postage okay. stamp will do, or do I need to, okay. do I need to do more? No. no. In your resources, that, in those things that we gave you that you can download to, um, to print out, in your resources, there is a place, um, there's a lot of places you can get them, but I found a source for six inch by six inch square white envelopes. You can get colored ones. They're just going to cost you more. <laughs> but anyway, um, I put in a, a link there to where you can get those and they're reasonably priced. And I put them in that six by six inch envelope and they fit just perfectly. And they're going to cost you to mail. Because they're loaded with stuff, they're, they're going to be thick enough that you're going to have to send them like you do a package. So They'll cost you anywhere from $3.80 to $5, depending on how much stuff you put in there and how heavy it is. I'm going to give you an example of some things. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this little guy? It's got a little light on it. I got these at Dollar Tree. And uh, we people who are over 50 <laughs> love these because it's a magnifier with a light <laughs> because our eyes are going. Um, 
And so that's going to be heavier to mail, but I'll tell you, it'll be a well-appreciated gift for, you know, anybody from your moms to your dads, your grandpa's ages and older. But those are just some examples of things. Um, in that picture, I know I showed you the, um, the notepad that was shaped like a, a letter, like somebody's initial. And sometimes what you can do too is take those apart and send, you know, more than one, you know, send them to more, more than one person. Um, and then just put a piece of plain paper behind them and fussy cut around them. But, um, and then this is, this is that stamp pad I was telling you about that had all the different colors on it. And I got it because it had a lot of colors that for, you know, not too much money as opposed to buying different pads. One of the things on your resource page is current, uh, currentcatalog.com. They sell greeting cards, they sell uh, little gifties, they uh, sell stickers. I get a lot of great stickers from them. They're not as cheap as Dollar Tree, obviously, but I, uh, my secret is I only order when their shipping is free because it costs you more to mail stuff because paper's heavier. And, uh, but anyway, I've gotten some great uh, magnetic bookmarks from them. I'll get cards, like some of the cards that I showed you that were decorated, like, um, I can't remember the, if the one with the shoes on it was from them or not, but <laughs> um, got a lot of great cards from them. And then also in your resources, there is a instruction sheet for making a multi-pocket, a multi-fold pocket. And let me see if I can pull this up. Um, hold on. Come on, you can do this. Well, she's pulling that up. I will say we only have about three minutes left. Um, but we will be emailing you all these documents that she has provided as resources um, after the event. And I think it has her email on it, so you can continue to ask answer, uh, ask her questions. Well, the, the, one we, the one we sent before the class has my email and everything on it. It even has my phone number. This is a multi-fold pocket, and this is really fun. This is what I did with junk mail down here. You can always do that and then decorate it. But... Um, Sometimes at Dollar Tree, you can find them, uh, but this is just from a pad of paper. The one side's white, the other's a print. And this one happens to be an oblong pad. It's not big. It was only about like a six by nine inch pad or maybe even smaller than that. <laughs> and then what you do is you uh, turn it over with the white side up and then you fold this over and then you turn it. And just like we did with our card, you're gonna fold it in thirds just like we did with the base of our card. So they folded the left over and then folded the right over. But look, it makes all these great pockets and all this interest. This is a great thing to do like on the front of your card, you know, like for that little part that goes under the bird's beak. Or let's say you want to, this is good for you, Sarah, when you wanted to save money, take a regular greeting card, glue this on the left side of the inside and put little goodies in it. And it's gonna be cheaper to mail. But, um, you know, I, I tell them, if I don't have time or I don't have the inclination to make a big fancy card for somebody, I'll do that. I'll stick this in a <laughs> regular greeting card and put some little goodies in there. And you can put gift cards in for relatives and stuff like that. I, I encourage you, if you put anything with money or a gift card in your card, put a sticky note on the front of your card before you put it in the envelope to mail. <laughs> that says there are valuable spendable items in here because my niece has got a, a card from my uh, sister, didn't realize it had gift cards in it. And they looked at, oh, this is fine, you know, and then they threw them away. They didn't realize they had gift cards in them. Yes, I know the younger generation doesn't always think <laughs> as excited about what we're doing. So anyways, but um, yeah, give them a heads up that there's valuables in there, especially if you make those uh, birthday cards with the money rolled up like candles could be could be interesting. So um, anyways, any other questions? Can you see how much fun this is? <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> Take it away. Valerie, I just want to, I want to say thank you so much. Your creativity is off the charts.
And this, all the resources you've provided um, are going to be very helpful when I try to make my very first loaded card. So, um, and my first one's going to be a Mother's Day card. You have given me great ideas for that. So Yay, thank you. That's a great idea. Um, I would like to thank everyone for attending today. And, you know, Valerie's volunteered her time for this. And if anyone else uh, would like to volunteer in any capacity, um, I've just put an email in the chat box, just email alumni at ucsc.edu. And we would um, love to see how you wanna contribute um, back to the university. And then along those lines, we uh, there is an Alumni Week crowdfunding page and you're encouraged to make a donation if you'd like. And I have to say, I'm most passionate about the Alumni Association Scholarship Fund project that's on that page because we, we gave out 49 scholarships this year. They're $3,000 each that the students get every year. And we just wanna grow that fund so we can give more students this scholarship to help them through their educational journey. Um, so anyway, thanks everyone. And I go enjoy more alumni week events and email me go slugs. Email me, email me pictures of your cards that you make. <laughs>